He's always good. He's never bad. Amen. We can't say the same. He's always good. And we're grateful to be a child of God. Uh, we're um, thank you, Rose Smith, for last week for uh, uh, oh, intention Bible study. Yeah, I saw. Amen. But we'll th I thank you for keeping it going. All of you who have come out to support uh, the Bible study, we're great for all the kids, those who are bringing the children out. Um, we're grateful for that as well. I want to open up with a prayer. Uh, Sister Mark, you want to do something with prayer? Sister, you can pass it Heavenly Father, gracious God, thank you for this evening. Thank you for bringing us together to study your word. Lord, you are the teacher. We are the students. We come with open hearts and minds to receive your word. Be God and strengthen us in our abilities to be taught. Give us the courage to walk in your ways. You know, Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that we have, for all that we have in this world. And the Heavenly Father, pray for peace in this world, in this nation, in this state, in this city, in this town. Oh Lord, your peace is what we need. And the Heavenly Father, thank you for all who are here tonight to study your word. <clears throat> we pray, O oh Lord, that you will give us peace in our lives. And O oh Lord, we love you and we thank you. That's all of those who are here. And we bless and we ask your blessings for all of those who want to come with tonight. Thank you for all of those. And we pray for all of those who are sick and home in hospitals, nursing homes, and even in the streets. Oh Lord, I pray that you would touch them, heal them if it is your will. And oh Lord, we give you all praise. Amen. Thank you, uh, Sister Martin. And let me thank those that made the Online via Zoom in, into the Bible study as well. Uh, Brother Smith, anybody uh, want to talk about what you had last week? What you talked about? Uh, anybody remember what, what Benny said? They remember everything. <laughs> anybody remember what we discussed? Everybody was speaking my own wait, wait a minute, teacher. Hey, remember. <laughs> Anybody? Well, we talked about love and loving your brothers and sisters and talking about Christian love. Okay. You know, and if you are a Christian, then you truly love your brothers and your sisters. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. All right. Well, we got we got a spokesperson. Okay, we got some stuff. Okay, yeah, so let me ask you, Mike, somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> we just we, we just wanted to know if you remember what what was. I was going to ask you. Okay. okay. So, all right. Well, Brother Smith, we'll let you come on and give us something. Okay. Uh, last week we talked about hindrances from having fellowship hmm. with God, and uh, we we kind of went back to the. First verse where it said, My little children, these things I write to you that you may not sin. Mm -hmm. And a sin was the first thing that gets you out of fellowship with God. Mm -hmm. uh, next thing we talked about, we talked about loving one another. Because uh, we got to love each other. And, and I won't say before we love God, but at the same time. Because, mm -hmm. you know, you can't love God and don't love me. Right. 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 And you that's the got a little, okay? <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> All right. Uh, but yeah, uh, you know, uh, that's that was one of the advices that uh, John gave. And then he said, you can't love the world. Mm. And we talked about what that is. And uh, lastly, we talked about the spirit of the Antichrist as well. And he's already here. How the Antichrist is going to pull you away from 
those things we know are right. So basically, that's what we were saying. Those things will keep you out of fellowship with God. Thank you, Brother. All right, that was something important that uh, you said, how you doing, person? All right. Uh, don't we like the way God set things up? Okay, you hadn't seen me, but you love me. But you see people you hang out with. You go to stores. Go to the malls. You sit in Sunday school with on Wednesday night, the Bible stuff to you. You talk to them by phone, but don't love them. You just like them. But then you love God. And we love God because He gives us, you know, God look out for us, right? He takes care of us. He comes to our knees. He wakes us up. Without Him, uh, there would be no us, right? And we have those reasons, but he said that still, you love me, but you got to love me. How many people be in heaven still up there with a frown and mouth tuned up? <laughs> the eyes all rolling in heaven. That ain't going to happen, right? We first fix ourselves down here. All right, so tonight we're going to start in chapter three. And next week, I want to um, I want to do something different. I want to do congregation singing on next Wednesday from six to seven. But I want to talk to the choir, and some song leaders, and some members. And let's have you know we're going to start you know this conference year meeting with that and, and prayer. Okay. 1 John 3, before I read the scripture, I want to come up with, um, I was putting this, uh, this lesson together, I was, you know, taking some commentaries and other books, but I was online looking at something that would tie me into this, and it talks about the United States Treasury Department as a special group of men whose job is to crack down counterfeiters. And naturally, these men need to know a counterfeit bill when they see it. How do you learn the identity of fake bills? Then he said, oddly enough, they are not trained by spending hours examining counterfeit money. Rather than study the real thing. How many of us spend time looking for fake people? We don't. We trust that everybody we come into will be real. Right? Everybody we come in, although people have their agenda, you know, some will find you just to you know, see what they can get out of it, right? They study the real thing. They become so familiar with authentic bills that they spot a counterfeit just by looking at it. Or simply by doing it. This is the approach we see in 1 John um, 3. It warns us, it, it, it gives us, it warns us about counterfeit Christians. Children of the devil. 1 John 3 and 10, it says that and these children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. And the scripture tells us that, you know, we got children of God, but, but we got children of the devil. The devil can get in any body if we allow him. He can't do anything unless he enter into someone to do the work for him, right? But it, then it says, but instead of listening, the evil characteristics of Satan's children, the scripture gives us a clear description of God's children. That's a contrast between the two. So when we look into this um, uh, John uh, 3, when, as it started out, there was three things that I wanted to say that we want to see here. 
And verse 1 through 3, we're going to see God, the Father, love us. Amen. In verses 4 through 8, we're going to see God, the Son, die. And then when we look at 9 and 10, God, the Holy Spirit, lived in us. John wanted to help the church. He wanted to help the people he was speaking to, just like all the writers. You know, the problem is, you know, will we listen? God loves us. God has a unique love. He don't have that love of hate. He don't turn his love on and turn it off. Even when we're not so good, he still loves a person. Amen? Just like we would still love our children when they, you know, when they don't do everything we tell them to do and don't always do things right and go their own way, we still love them. Right? Um, so when we look into this, we want to see, first we want to see counterfeits, we want to see those that, um, that are of God, right? Okay, any questions or comments when we get into verse 1? Jumping around here. 
Back then, it was a mess, right? So let's let's look let's look at when we summarize it here. God loves us and makes us His children. Mm -hmm. I didn't say that. Okay. Oh, well, I'm, I'm okay. Okay, so. Well, here's the thing. Okay, if. Do we find in the Bible where it says stay out of court? It says stay what? Unspotted. Right? So, what will typically happen when you go to them? Stands all right, drinking. Okay, now what, at what point have you committed a sin? If you get drunk, if you get drunk, well, what happens? What happens if you never take a drink? Mm -hmm. You just, you just in that sort of way. So, so that's what I'm saying. So many people put they cast every stone they can, but they weren't there to see what was really going on. If you went in there and just sat, look, when I was when I was old enough to go to club, 21, I went one time. I didn't like nothing about it. You know, but that doesn't say that there was someone there that was in there doing what they did not. Everybody have different reasons why they go. There was a married couple at one of the churches I pastored. They're still married now. They met each other at the club. Thank you, Sister Reed. We, I heard you. You got a mic back there? Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> say that say that one more time. Yeah, I was just saying that you know Jesus had to go to the people. He was never confined inside the walls of the church. And that's just like us. That's the only way we can reach people. You know, that's why you have the prison ministry and all these different ministries. You have to go to the people and meet them where they are. Yeah. So I don't feel like a preacher just only has to go to a gospel concert. You that's know, right. it's okay to enjoy yeah. life, just do it in a respectful you know, preaching like man. So, and what John is trying to say, yes, sir. I mean, yes, ma'am. You got too much. Um, I just wanted to say, um, to list off that, um, uh, one story I wanted to say that in one of my churches, we had, uh, we were having our uh, women's conference celebration, so and um, they we asked questions, and what they did was they throw the questions in the hat. Mm -hmm. And so anyone can ask anything, you can have to you ask a question. Mm -hmm. And one of the questions was um, as a as a preacher, are you are you are you allowed to drink? And they they didn't the way that it was answered was like, um, yeah, you can if you want, you know, blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. But the main point that was made was that when you when you become Christian, mm -hmm. when you, you know, I feel with the Holy Spirit and all that, mm -hmm. you know, there are certain things in life that you just don't want to do anymore. Right. You know, it's like, um, so like some people might, you know, want to drink and get drunk or mm -hmm. go to the club and be shaking this and mm -hmm. drinking this and or whatever. But it's like once you become, you get saved and you start getting filled with the Holy Spirit and stuff like that, you're like, you know what, I, I'm not for that. I'm good. I don't want to eat any other stuff, you mm -hmm. know. And so uh, I think I think there's different levels, right? You know, um, you know, there's nothing wrong with having the dream. No, there's nothing wrong with listening to other music and things like that. But you just have to know where to draw the line. Yeah. And, so. so going back to Sister Taylor, okay, we, you know, I go in the club as a Christian, but what I do in there will determine if I've got a lot of world to take. If I decided I'm gonna drink, I'm gonna have one, and then I got two, and then I got three, and then I got four, and then all of a sudden that did everything that I said that didn't look good, and all of a sudden it's beautiful now. Yeah. And when I said I'm not going home with this person, all of a sudden I'm waking up and the next day and next beside the person. I mean, those things, there's some things that lead up to being into the world. But the Holy Spirit, once it's in you, control you, then those things, um, you know, you, you can uh, stay outside of the world, be unspotted. Basically, people just don't do that because temptation is serious. So once they say, okay, I've given my life to God, I've moved on, I'm, I'm, well, you know, but then Satan sends something, your way to see if you can handle it, withstand what's going on. And there are some people just say, I need to stay away from that because, you know, the, the scripture tells us to stay away from those things that cause us to stumble easily. Right, right. Okay, so if you know that you ain't strong enough yet, you know, to stay away from those things that has caused you, you know, then you just stay away from it. And that's being unspotted. So when we look down here, in any more questions, did I answer that? Just to, to, so going in the club don't make you a sin. But what happens in there? Yeah. If you if you forgot that you was a Christian and you know start taking off all your clothes and dropping it like it's hot in there, and I think it's Taylor want to turn up this week. <laughs> Bagging it up like it's good, or whatever. You know, <laughs> the dead go like, well, you sure? That's a number of St. Peter, you know? You know, man, it's a guy, it's not going to be so. Uh -oh. Yeah. That man is yeah. 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 You know, just know that when a man sees you in the hood, turn it up. And it's nothing wrong, you know, it's nothing wrong with having fun. The problem is. Yeah. 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 The problem is when you give into, we all gonna be tempted, you know. 
But God said he doesn't tempt any man. Neither does he be tempted. He said, but we're drawn away by what? Our own lust and enticement. So those are, you know, you, you, you find your limits and what you You can't handle going in there knowing that, you know, you're going to fall weak. I mean, we had, we, we went up to uh, Cartersville and some of our co-workers, um, they had an open bar. In the restaurant, they closed the restaurant in Georgia for uh, all the employees that we, we had this rodeo. They do every year, and they have to drive and show their skills and different things like that. So they they rented out this restaurant, and we didn't know some of our guys can get to work. So my supervisor, we we you know went, while our regional uh, supervisor was talking. We had one gentleman from Birmingham, and they bring them from all over the world to, the, to this one location. And he's just cheering them on. He, he's just yelling. He said, we have never seen him like this. But he, he was just throwing them down. So my supervisor said, go up to the bar and tell them to cut him off. Because, you know, the company paid him. So I went up to the bar, and I said, look, don't give him any more drinks. And he turned, looked at me, who told you that? <laughs> and I said, the supervisor, he still, he said, I'll move you in the supervisor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he was that it? <laughs> then he started showing his muscles. <laughs> so the young lady at the bar says, she started to, you know, because she saw him getting all upset, she started to calm down. So she said, well, um, where you all from? I said, we, us three here from Birmingham. Yeah, and, and she said, <laughs> She said, well, my name's April. And I said, well, your name must be April because you're from, you know, you must have been born April. I got a cousin that was born on April the second. Her name's Jennifer. So he she said, he said, um, she said, yeah. And then he said, well, my name's May. That's how drunk he was. He thought he said his name was Art. I said, no, your name's Art. He said, that's what I said. I said, no, you didn't. He said, oh, I meant to say I was born in May. But here's what I'm trying to say. We cut him off at the bar, got him back to the hotel, took him to his room. He promised us that he wasn't going to come out. At the Hilton, they had a bar there too. So he goes back down during the night, have more drinks, find out he was laid out on the table. I mean, all the you know offices, they were made, you know, because he was got into it with other people. So what I'm saying is, if you can't handle what you think you can handle, stay away from it. So the next day he gets in the rodeo, he's driving, and you know, they have to get on this obstacle course and they have to roll, roll or put the tires between these the tennis balls without hitting them and they have to go around the curve without hitting the thing. They have to bag up without, and just fail miserably. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> And our supervisor said, you won't be back to the next one. Because <laughs> neither, you know, neither one of us are in. But the company have open bars, so it's a choice. You know, whether you go, what you can handle, what you can't handle. So in verse 1, it says, God loves us and he makes us his children. John, now, he continues with two subjects. One, he said, Christians are born of God. And then that's the return of Christ. John tells us how great the Father love is for us. Those who believe are his children. We got to believe that he came, right? You got to believe that God is. You got to believe that he, but you know, there's some people that say, well, how old is God? But God had not revealed that. He's been there from the beginning. He's, he's eternal, right? So uh, we don't know. So those who believe are his children. So he tells the father of all Christians, they have been born again of God. The father loves each one of us with great love. His love is so much more than any other love. So we know this love because he sent his son. God loves us so much to die for us. We can be children because of his love. Okay, who has in mind? I want you to pick up right there. Um, but John is astonished at the love of God. You see it there? God is John is astonished at the love of God. It is a love that is strange to us. Okay, now, anybody have that strange love? So, no. So, I ain't no one. No. 
But what, what strange do you, what, what strange love? Give me your belief. You don't, don't tell me what happened. <laughs> 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 is the first, the first love is strange love? Why? Well, because you, you just head over heels, you just do, uh, you, 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 you only love? It's, it's so that strange. Okay. So you can be loving <laughs> and it can be strange, right? You can have a strange love. It's, it's a love that, okay, well, you. I'm questioning, your dude, is this really love? Or is it not? Is that strange love to you or is that something else? Sister Mama said her first love was strange. I have a guy. Y'all need to remember. <laughs> <laughs> What's strange? What's strange about love? What could be strange? Because the way God loves us, and, and, and we have a person on earth who's like that, who just uh, not. That's the strange love we got a man, or let's say God, man, that he can give me for anything. It is the devil, yeah. no matter how I treat him. Mm -hmm. And you know, you use my money, you treat my dog as though you there. But I had to get there. I'm there to see you know, I'm working on you. <laughs> okay, but I, that used to be how I was. And, um, you know, but, you know, no matter what you do, that person's going to love you. That there's nothing you can do that would make them not love you. Mm -hmm. That's strange to us. Mm -hmm. It's strange to ever be able to even have that feeling that whatever the other person does. But no, I hear what you're saying. That's right. But what about other than God? How could we have strength for For anybody, right? right? So, so, so it could be strange if Sister Taylor just doing me any kind of way, and I still love her. That's strange. Because now I'm trying to, you know, they look at me like I'm great. Oh, you gonna let her do you like that? That's strange love. Or you're going to abandon all your family and all your friends. Yeah. Yeah. Strange love. Right? It's strange. Okay. I, that's not normal. For me to love somebody that don't love me back. Is that not Christ like? Is that not Christ like? That's definitely Christ like. That's strange love. If I love you back no matter how you treat me, that's Christ like, but it's still strange because people don't do that. Right? But is it an aspiration? Love really is. 
And it's so great that God calls us his children. By his love, he has made us his children. Okay, God loves us so much, even we can be the baddest of the baddest. And he still loves us. Now, we see our little children embarrassing us. We be wanting to just grab them and just shake them and say, you know, this, this can't be my child. But we, this is an example for us too. That if God loves his children and we've been bad, why can't we love our children when they've been bad? All of us can be corrected somewhere and some, but even from the poor bit to the view. There's something that we can find in our life, in our mind, in our, that we can adjust to and ask God to hey, help me with this. But sometimes we just don't do it. We know we got a problem with somebody, but we're not going to ask God right now. We know there's some things that God, we need to change. I'm not going to talk about right now. Give me, give me some time. But then God says, we don't know the time of the hour when, he, when he's going to come get us. Which means every day we're supposed to be living like there's no tomorrow. But then that's some people think they're going to live forever. And that's not true. Amen. Go ahead. We yeah, had nothing to do with this, but it all comes from God's love for us. All people who are real Christians have been born again. They have become part of God's own family. They are the children of God. They are his children, not just by name. They also, they are also his ch children of God. The people of the world do not know God. They do not recognize Jesus when he And we're talking about of the world. We're talking about those that just wandered about, don't have a relationship with him, don't talk with him, don't pray to him. You know, they, they just love the part. They love to do whatever they want to do. And they don't have to be part. They can do other stuff. That's not right with God, right? They can't be his child, children. But God still loves them. He just wait on them to say, okay. And God, and there's a time where God will say, okay, enough is enough. Let me put a stumbling block here to recognize that I'm here. And I see, but I need them to know that I'm, I'm still here. I look at, I, I, I still care. I just want to talk to them and let us build this relationship. All right, go ahead. They did not recognize Jesus when he was on the earth. People, I mean, because the people of the world do not know God, they cannot know his children. The world does not understand the Christian or God's children. Christians do not really belong in the world. They are like strangers who own this earth. Okay, those of you, when you first became a Christian, you had some friends that really didn't know God, really didn't go to church. How did, how did you feel around them? How did you feel? Some of y'all knew didn't have an issue. A lot of them, you know, back off. They back off, right? I'm like, like, uh, you know, when you under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, there are certain things that you might do that you don't even want oh, to do in the moment. Mm -hmm. And so some of that, you know, some of that came with some step away, some I stepped away from because I didn't want to do the things that I did to them mm -hmm. anymore. Right. Yeah. They, they use it back away. They use it just fade away. When they do not want to, you're right now. When they do not want to, um, you know, change. You know, we ran the streets together. They don't remember when. They remember what we did yesterday. We remember, like, oh, didn't we have a good old time? And, you know, now we, we're not having this time. So, hey, I got to find somebody else. So, hey, you will lose friends. You will lose your best friends if they don't want to walk with you. You know, the Bible tells us, how could you walk together unless they agree? When that one person that's not agree, that agreed with you to run the streets and do everything under the sun, now there's a disagreement. Either they want to line up and become them, or they no, let me, you know, I ain't, I ain't ready to put my, I ain't ready to hang up my, my belt yet. Sister. Or I was going to talk to you about what she said now. I think also that, uh, and for me, I had friends um, that people that had been for me, and they knew that I was different. So there were certain things they would do or say about me. Oh, yeah. You know, so like, you know, ooh, I don't curse when I was pretty, but she, you know, she would say something. And so when it came just to the council or whatever, they make sure they don't push around me, they make sure they don't play bad music around me, you know, just stuff like that. So I think it's just kind of 
teach it to you, then it's not the way it gave you to teach it. Yeah. And, 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 it, and, it, and then you have to stand, you know, you have to stand ground. So verse one told us what we are. Right? We, we go into verse two, and verse two also, it, it, it basically let us know, you know, where we are now. It's um, uh, what, what, we would, what we shall be when we look at that. It, uh, beloved now, we are the children. We are the sons of God. And it do not yet appear what we shall be. I mean, when you become a Christian, you are children, okay, of God. Now, it doesn't appear yet sometimes. But we shall. We can look at somebody and say, hey, we'll never get it right. But the Bible doesn't say that. It does not appear what we shall be. You know, if you go back and talk to some of my classmates, and I was class clown in school and did everything, they say that, that boy will never preach the word of God. From high school, and I, and I never thought I would be doing it either. But the scripture said, we, yeah, we don't know what it, what, what it appear what we shall be, but we know that when Jesus shall appear, when he shall appear, we shall what? Be like him. Uh, for we shall see him as he is. Now, anybody ever seen Jesus that's, that's living? Okay. Okay. Y'all tell me what to look but, but he, he's been gone. Any, anybody can pick up. Um, so in, in, in this verse, we'll see um, what we shall. Anybody want to pick up verse 2? My dear friends. My dear friend, we are children of God now. We do not yet know what we shall become. Now, now, John is reminding me. And sometimes we need a reminder, right? Sometimes we need a reminder when we get out to the Alabama games, road tides. That we need to be reminded, you know, that we still are, are Christians. We, we, we still are children of God. Okay. Uh, amen. Yeah. We can get out there, Sister Young, and, and forget that, you know, we can children of God. Right? But John's saying he's talking to Christians now, ones that have already have given their life to God. But now we need to be, and we need to be reminded sometimes if we get ourselves away from the Bible, look, the Bible will keep us from sin, or sin will keep us from the Bible. They don't go together. Right? One or two things gonna happen. That's why when you leave here tonight and go throw your Bible on the uh, you know under the bed or on the and then don't pick it back up till Sunday. Amen. I know okay. I go go ahead. However, we do know this when Christ comes again, we will be like him. We will see him as he is. That is why we will be like him. You know, I used to remember how the seniors and older people would always say, when I see it, I'm going to run to the seat. I'm going to embrace it. I'm going to embrace it when I see it. You know, Christians have this desire. They have this yearning. They're not running this race just to see Robin when they get there. They would love to see her, but they see her not down there. But we hadn't seen Jesus. But we, we shall be like him. When he returned, we shall be like him. How can we be like Jesus? When he was all powerful and all known, all true. How can we be like him? He was still man. He was still man, right? We got, uh, wait a minute, we got his characteristics. If we're believers, we'll have his What are some of his characteristics? She hit it on the head. Love is one, right? Long suffering. Anybody can suffer long. Come on, tell the truth now. We we in the house of God. He ain't shooting fire from heaven anymore. Hey, forgiveness, right? But what else? To be meek and humble, you know, the fruit of the spirit. When we have that, we can be like him. But some people say, I can't do that. 
I don't know what it's like to be kind and loving and gentle and meekness and forgiving. Long suffering. I don't know what it's like. Either you're going to learn what it's like. Amen. Or you never experience it because you're too far burning. Asking God, can you get me out of this? Amen. All right. Did you pass it to the uh, Yes, ma'am. I think that's a very hard question. I don't know how to be this that's a very hard question. This body that we live in, I don't know how we can do it. That's why that's why Jesus died on the cross, so he knows we couldn't we couldn't take it. That's why he died on the cross to save us from our sins. That is very hard. I don't know that. Yeah, being a Christian is hard. Right? Yeah. But you saying you don't know if you can ever be kind, or you saying you can't be long suffering, or you can't be I can be all of those. Okay. I can, I can, I can, you are all of those. I, I, I can be those, but that, that just sent the body in this window, you know, or make the condition. I may think, say, or thought, that sin is the same. Yeah. But there's also practice. There's a practice of being, you know, how do we get perfect at anything? Let me ask you. We practice. Jesus know it's hard, but we practice. Just like a soft answer does what? Turns the way around. But we have to practice our soft answers. But what what's the opposite of that? Harsh words, what? It stir up confusion. But we have to practice not using harsh words. But here's the thing: if you never Purge it out. You got to ask God to help you with that. Yeah. Anything that we ask God to help with, God will not fail us. But we have to ask not only we have to do. You know, you, you know, faith without works is what? You got to have faith that it's going to happen, but then you got to have some works to go along with it. How I look, asking God, I need to be long suffering, Lord, but I never practice it. Soon as somebody called me, Go ahead. And it's not our time. As soon as somebody calls me, I'm going out to him. Right? If I want to be kind, I have to do what? Okay, how can I be kind and I'm still hateful? It's, it's, it starts right here. He said, as a man think of, so is he. It starts in the mind when you think about it. Okay, if I'm thinking about being kind and loving and and, and tender heart and long, if I'm thinking about it and I'm practicing it, then it gets easier and easier, just like when we learn how to play basketball. Yeah. You practice and you put it into in perspective. When you learn how to sing, when you start singing, right? When you practice, you sing better. When you pray more, yeah. it gets easier and easier, but you can't do it in your own strength. And you said something important. You got to have what? You got to have faith. You got to have faith. What else you got to do? You can't do it your own strength. Who else strength? What strength you need? Christ. You need Christ's strength. You got to ask him to have, you know, help me with all these things that I'm having an issue with. Yeah, right. I, 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 I've been there. I believe that. I, I, I'm not going to say it by now. I've been there. I did all what you said. I tried to well, look, Satan says, yeah, he's the prince of darkness, right? Even when the sons of God came to present themselves before God, I guess who's with them? Satan came up. He's not going to leave you alone, especially if you're trying to live a Christian life. And then when you're just doing everything you want to do and not thinking about God, he can bother you for what? He said, I already got her, let me move on to the next one. But what I said that to say, you know, don't do it in your own shoes. Yeah, I tried and say, he, he won't keep coming. The Bible did you know say and he said he's roaming the earth to and fro, seeking whom he may devour. Amen. He's looking for somebody that he can get into and cause him to do his work. But you just don't give up. Yeah. You gotta just keep on leaning on, keep on trusting, and then tell Satan to get on about his business. 
And then he's still gonna come back. And if he don't bother you, he's gonna attack your children. Then your grandchildren. Then your, your cousins. Somebody he's gonna keep messing with. But we still have a God that still don't deviate from the fact that if we practice, you know, kindness and forgiveness, that don't deviate that, that, that God won't help you with. It. God will help you with anything you ask him to. The problem is he said we have not because we ask him. All right, I got nine minutes. You, you, you. Oh, I'm going to go. Here you go. Okay. I was just, I was going to say um, to Mama, what Mama was saying is that, um, you know, we, we are so, uh, I guess, what he, we're just so blessed to have, um, have a Savior because yeah. it's like, um, he knows your heart. Mm -hmm. So the thing about it is, is that if you were trying to be a child of God and you're you're um, confessing your sins and you're asking for forgiveness and you're you're repenting, you know, and you're actually trying to stay away from this, he knows your heart, he knows that you're trying, he knows that. Um, but then you have ones that are not trying to be, and they just want to keep on doing and keep on doing and keep on sinning. And he knows that as well, you know, so it's like all the, you know, he, like you said, practicing his purpose. So keep trying because he knows that you're trying. Right. He, 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 he sees the ones that are trying and he sees the ones that are just trying to be seen. Yeah, and you and you said something I want to say this now. Thank you so much. You know, the disciples was with Jesus all the time. And Satan, would, he didn't quit bothering them. Right? Yeah. You know, even them being with Jesus, they still had a hard time Believing that Jesus was still Jesus. They still questioned him when they got by themselves. Okay, well, Lord, why we couldn't do this? Well, Lord, why we couldn't uh, teach us how to pray? They was with the man that knows how to pray, that can pray for anybody, but they was with him, but they still said, Lord, teach us how to pray. That lets us know that we're never going to be perfect. Right? But we can strive for perfection. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I got one more thing to say. Uh, Job. Yes. I, I don't need it. I don't know. I can talk about that. I don't know. Like Job, he was a perfect man, but he walked with Jesus. Mm -hmm. And the same thing came in. Yes, and look what he went to before he came to his senses. Look at Look what, look, look, look what, 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 look Sundays or twice a week, 
And you can't get abide in him like you, you should at home while you're driving, while you're in Walmart. You can abide in him. You know, when that person comes jump you in your line, you, you know, you, you want to crucify, right? But you have to abide, he has to abide in you after that. You know, you know, and, and sister, you know, I'm not saying it's easy to be, it, it, it's, it's a hard job. Mm -hmm. You ready? But Psalm of verse 2 answers all of that for us as, as far as how we're living now and the things that we're having to endure now. It says, we are God's children now. Right. But he has not shown us what we shall be like in the future. But we know that God will change us. Mm -hmm. He'll do the change. Yeah. Right. He said, let the weak come up with the tab. That ain't on this paper. I'm just telling you right. another scripture. Let the weak come up with the tab. And I'll do the separation. Amen. He'll separate us. Yeah. He'll He'll, he'll elevate us to where mm -hmm. we are able to withstand the wiles of the devil. Mm -hmm. It says right here in the song of verse 2, that he will change us. We will not always live as we live now. The future will be much better. Mm -hmm. yeah. And which future are we talking about? Yeah. We're, we're talking about heaven. Yeah. And that's the eternal future. Yeah. Go ahead, sister. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to stop we, we, we do not yet know all the future benefits for God's children. But one fact is certain. We shall be like Christ, the Son of God. One day the Lord Jesus will come back to take his people to heaven. Then we shall see Jesus Christ as he is. When we see him, we shall change. Uh, how will we change? How will we change? How will we change? We're going to change from what? We're going to change from, from uh, M to right. From one to them. You're going to change. That, 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 that pain that you feel now, I mean, those of you that feel pain, you, you won't hear. And then Jesus said, he don't know when he's coming back, only his father know. But when they come back, we will know. The trumpets will sound. He said that, that you know, the seas will give up their dead. You know? Everything will be, they're going to rise. Those that are there will, will rise first. Those that are already going to will rise. And then the ones that are still living that remain will be caught up in, in the cause. Go ahead, sister. Uh, we, okay. When we see him, we shall change. All his people will change to be like him. But nobody can ever be equal to him. Amen. We will not become God as he is. But we will be similar to him in character. We will live with God the Father and with the Lord Jesus. We shall never die. We, we will be clean from sin and there will be no more sin. As Jesus is holy, so he will make us. Lord, you know, that's good news. Holy. That's good news. That's encouragement for us to strive to be like him right now. And, and we just need to practice that. And not only we should keep it to ourselves, but you know, even those that we know, those that we love, we need to share this with them. We want to see everybody make it to heaven. Amen. We want to see that because he said there's a place where the worm dies not. There's another place that we can go to. So we're gonna stop on verse two. I spent it fall that we didn't get past. I was gonna try and get all ten verses, but I gotta blame it on somebody. Amen. I'm just kidding. Thank you all so much for being here. It's good to see all of you faces. I really wanted to stop before the end, but y'all are just too good. So I want to see if there's any prayer requests of those that need to get, um, you know, go on and get back home. Um, any any prayer requests for this evening? Yes. Yeah, she's home. Uh, Brother Tommy Lott, I went to see him last Sunday. He was released. I went to see him last night and got in the room and it was empty. And I went back to the nurse's stand and they said he had just been transported over the spot for um, for the rehab, rehab. But they amputated those who didn't know his right foot has been taken off. Yeah. 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 He's um, in Sarah's house. You said great job. He's great. Yeah. Yeah. 
If uh, he's, he's uh, selling his house and um, his son's gonna want to move in with him, so that those are the plans, right? Now. So, uh, but he was looking so much better since they took that off so much in such a good spirit. He called Brother Smith, yeah, but he's there now. Um, and um, we thank God. And me and Sister Prince heard, um, talked to her daughter, and in fact, her today. Um, our daughter yesterday after the surgery it was, it was it went pretty good. And those, yes, sir. Uh, I want to ask you a question. We need to have about four roads in and out. What is the key thing about the people who need to have that? Okay. So you're traveling? Um, keep Reverend Green's family lifted up. He lost his favorite brother last night. Um, he, he passed away with cancer. So keep him lifted up. Um, anybody else? Oh, Reverend Green. Who's talking about Sister Lynn? No. Oh. Oh. Father, we're so grateful for your Holy Spirit, one you sent down as he went up. 
Lord, to comfort us and to lead us and to guide us, Father, in the way that we should go. Let your Holy Spirit, Lord, continue to saturate St. Peter, Father. Not only this church, but every church that's open in your name. Father, we come lifting up our presiding elder this evening, Father, and his, his family, Father, asking for our continued grace and mercy and blessings among that family. Continue to lift up our bishop and his family in Jesus' name. Lord, continue to lead and guide them as they lead us uh, in this Alabama, Florida, Episcopal District, Father. Father, we pray for all of our members now, and right now in the name of Jesus. Father, there may be some that's sick that we don't know about. Father, we lift them up to you right now for healing. There may be some, Lord, that are bereaving and need comfort that we just aren't aware of, Father. Um, not knowing what's going on, Father, but you know. You know all and you see all. Father, we lift them up to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we come, Lord, lifted up. Um, yes, me, Father. Yes, me, Father. Um, we understand, Father, what's going on. You already know what's going on with him, being his grandson. Father, praying, Lord, for his knee. Lord, praying that his knee will get better. And Father, we know if you just speak it in the name of Jesus, it, it can get better, Father. But we pray for those that are looking after him, those who are giving him medicine, Father, that you would allow them to give him the right treatment so he can get back on that field, Father, in the name of Jesus. And Father, don't let his grandfather or, or grandmother, don't let his mother worry about him, but let him know, Lord, that he's going to be okay. Father, we lift up Julia Prince unto you right now in the name of Jesus. Brother Tommy Lott, right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray, in, Lord, for speedy recovery right now, Father. We thank you, Lord, for the successful surgeries, Father. We thank you, Lord, for being with the, the doctors and the nurses and all of the staff, Father. But, Father, we will even thank you even more, Father, to see them, Lord, get better and better in the name of Jesus. Give them the strength that they need, Father, the encouragement that they need, Father, the resources in the name of Jesus. We lift up Brother Percy as he travel, Lord, to uh, in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, that you would lead and guide the vehicle there and back, Father. We pray, Lord, that you would just keep your angels around, Lord, and whatever they need provided for. And Father, we pray, Lord, that and we will give you all the glory and all the honor, Father, as we uh, see that, Father. We ask in the name of Jesus. We lift up Reverend Green. Father, in the name of Jesus and the Pruitt family, Lord, for comfort to you. We pray, Lord, that you will just mend their broken hearts, Lord, dry tears from their eyes, Father, bring their families closer together, Father, let them know that you hadn't left them, Father, and that you don't make mistakes, Father, but we all have to make that appointment one day or another, Father. We pray, Lord, that we would just open our eyes, Father, and, and see you in peace, Father. And we pray, Lord, that that family, we get, these families would get stronger and stronger, Father, and they know that you would, was in the midst. Father, we lift up, lift up Laura to you right now, Father. Lord, whatever she needs, we know you already know. Father, we know that you have already started uh, the work, Lord, and the construction, whatever that needs to be in her life, Father. We pray, Lord, that you would uh, fix her, Lord, for the better, change things around, Lord, and just lead and guide her in the name of Jesus. Don't let uh, them worry about her, Father, but know that she's uh, in your hand, Father. We pray, Lord, that you would change her mindset and her heart, Father, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, help her to turn to you, Lord, from which come her help, Father. All our help come down from you, Father. We lift up Fred Jr. unto you, Lord. We know that sometimes, Father, we begin to direct our own steps, Father, but we know, Lord, if we just seek you, Father, and pray, Lord, that there's nothing too hard for you, Father. You said there's nothing too hard. You made it. You created it, Father, and we know you're able to just grab them as our grandmother and, and grandfather used to tell us when they was praying for us, just when they, you see them going in the other direction, just grab them by the reins, Lord, and, and turn them back, Father. We pray that you would turn back to you, turn back to the church, Father, turn back to Jesus, Lord, that can do anything about everything, Father. We lift them up to you right now in the name of Jesus. And then, Father, we lift up James and, and Justin unto you right now, Father. We lift them up, Lord, and pray, Lord, that whatever they need, Lord, you provide it. We pray for the speed of recovery from uh, Justin, that he would get better and get healthy and get back on the field, Father, and Lord, to keep his mind focused in school and to come out in the name of Jesus. Whatever James needs, Father, his sister made the request. You know what it is. 
Father, we claim in it that it should be done and that you would do it, Father. Lord, we don't take prayer lightly because we know that prayer changes things, Father. You told us to pray without ceasing. Pray always. Pray for one another and love one another. Father, we ask that you would just help us, Lord, to continue to forgive and to love and to come closer and that you would get the glory, Father, when you see that we can walk together and agree and to study your word together. Father, we thank you. And we pray, Lord, as we leave tonight that you would get everyone to their different destinations safely, Father. We pray, Lord, that you would watch over us the rest of the week. Help us, Lord, to do and say things that are pleasing unto you. And, Father, forgive us if we've done anything from Sunday to now that you wasn't pleased with, Father. Forgive us right now in the name of Jesus. Cast them in the sea of forgiveness. Remember them no more in this life or in the judgment. And, Father, after we have walked our last night, sung our last song, and prayed our last prayer. Father, we pray if we go to sleep on this side, that we will wake up on the other side and see you in peace. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Good night, everybody. Yes, sir.